Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. An increasing number of big cities and medium-sized municipalities are looking to either build or procure new electricity capacity following changes to South Africa's regulations. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the prospects for such programs. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. What is driving municipalities to build or procure their own power? Well, I think there are already several drivers. The one is to mitigate ongoing load shedding because that affects their residents and their businesses as municipalities and their revenues. The other really is to deal with this issue of um, rising t Erskine tariffs. So there's a sort of gap starting to emerge between the electricity you can maybe generate yourself or buy from residents or buy from RPPs versus what Eskom is now offering you. So maybe taking advantage of that. The third is that a lot of these big cities in particular have got net zero or climate carbon reduction targets that they need to meet. So they want to get more renewable energy into the system. And I think a big last driver really is that uh, the, like Eskom, many of the uh, uh, utilities at the municipal level are in a sort of a financial death spiral and they need to find a new operational model. And I think they see this as taking control of their own destiny of being able to procure their own power directly, build their own power directly and manage uh, the electricity in the future in a way that's revenue positive. Several programs are now starting to emerge. Yes, just about uh, every municipality in the country, I think, is thinking about how they can take advantage of the rules that allow municipalities in good financial standing to start either building or procuring their own electricity. We know that the Cape Town uh, um, municipality has been for many years been at the vanguard of this and has been looking at different programs to uh, procure their own electricity. And uh, they are preparing uh, procurement programs and build programs. Uh, several Western Cape municipalities are being helped by the Western Cape provincial government. Uh, six of them, medium sized municipalities, uh, are looking at getting themselves in a state of readiness to begin, begin procurement. Then in Gauteng, we know that all the big mega cities in Gauteng, from Akureleni, Twane, and Joburg, also have advanced plans around procuring electricity. So, uh, and then uh, most recently, uh, the Itaquini uh, municipality, Durban, uh, has put out a request for information. So this is quite advanced stuff now. They've already got their own integrated resource plan. They've already developed a municipal uh, procurement program, RPP procurement program. And now they're testing the market with an RFI, which was released this week, uh, um, to test what sort of projects can be developed in the municipality uh, what, at what cost? Well, that will come out at a later stage in terms of um, the, an RFP, but to get some indication of what the advantages could be for security of supply and cost. So there's some advanced uh, developments now taking place across different municipalities. How do residential rooftop generators fit in? That's going to be interesting. I think that's going to be a city by city case. And it is a bit of a bone of contention. There's a lot of potential for rooftops to become prosumers or residents to become prosumers. So to consume as well as to produce electricity. Some municipalities definitely have got tariff structures in place, but there's not a lot of uh, happiness and it's not a great incentive at the moment to be a prosumer. You have to be a net importer of electricity from the municipality to qualify. Uh, which is a bone of contention. Also, the tariff differentials are not always that great, but at least we're entering that phase of where municipalities are saying, well, this is part of the mix. Uh, this is going to be part of the future generation mix for municipalities. Um, and we are looking at ways of integrating it. So I think we're at the very early stages, but uh, visibility of uh, as to how every municipality is going to treat residential rooftop is not really there yet. And it's not a dripping roast. How big a market is this likely to become for IPPs? Again, I think we don't really have clarity on that yet. We know that in the integrated resource plan, which is the national plan, there's a table. And in column five of that table, there is distributed generation uh, allocation. 
and that allocation is open-ended currently, but then gets restricted to 500 megawatts a year. So you've got municipalities, you've got big consumers like the mines and the smelters and the farms and the factories that are looking to enter that space and to take up that allocation. So there's going to be a contestation. And I think that is one of the issues that maybe in future, well, definitely in future, the integrated resource plan has to be updated. It's, uh, well, up there, uh, it is already out of date in terms of the technology costs. But I think also in terms of supply opportunities, this uh, allocation of 500 megawatts a year uh, is possibly going to be too small and could crowd out some of the municipal projects. What are some of the risks for municipalities, consumers and the system? I think because it's early days and we don't really know what we're doing, I think one of the big risks uh, is that municipalities buy too much too expensively as costs are coming down. They're not really proficient in the space. We know that government uh, at the national level has become more and more proficient in doing this procurement. So this capacity has to be developed at the municipal level. Otherwise, we can have serious casualties along the way, especially financial casualties, which would be which would be a really bad downside for the municipalities, which are really looking to use this to protect their revenue streams and their business models into the future or to create new business models. So I think that is a risk. And I think also this issue of the RP not being fully aligned or alive to this opportunity of municipal procurement as well as uh, other uh, that with the, the 100 megawatt cap for self-generation, it's not fully aligned to that as well as the technology cost changes that are happening. So that definitely needs to take place. And then of course, you know, grid access or the grid is the key enabler of this. And municipal grids are under stress or distressed. There's been a lack of investment. Eskom uh, uh, has also not invested sufficiently. So at that sort of uh, distribution grid level, I think that's going to be a major risk, uh, especially as more and more households and businesses and then municipalities want to add their own capacity. We need to make sure there's enough uh, grid capacity in place. But overall, all the risks are mitigatable and are manageable. We just need to uh, work it out together, have clear rules. And I think this is, gonna, is a risk factor at this stage as well. We don't know how nurse is going to interpret, for instance, uh, municipality in good financial standing, which is the rule in terms of the Gazette notice that was made last year by the minister. So there are a number of risks, but they all can be dealt with. And I think it's really now about getting moving on some of these things so that there is clarity and the risk can be mitigated and we can get this cheaper electricity and cleaner electricity onto the network. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.